Hey, Sam friends. Welcome to the Joy Stamp with Rachel. I'm Rachel Kuhn, and today is my team kit or my stamp set of the month kit. This is a kit that my team members can get for free. Well, sorry, for ten dollars, um, and they get to get their stamp set they buy for themselves at their discounted price. Or if you are a cut stamping friend, you can get this kit for free when you order the stamp set in the month of June. Go ahead and hold away, flip, and we'll get started. Hopefully everything is secure and that we're not too bouncy today and you guys can see everything. Welcome, welcome. This is one of my longer videos. We'll be making four cards using the Zany Zoo stamp set. Um, this is one of my favorites and when it came out in the new annual catalog for Stamping Up, I instantly knew I had to get it because of these cute, cute animals we have here. Um, let me go ahead and show you the stamp set and then also the dies. I like to store my dies inside my case. Let me open it up to show you. I have a magnetic piece right here that I attach them to. These dies are amazing. Not only do they cut out the outlines of our stamped images, but they have a lot of bonus things. Let me get closer. Oh, and also they will die cut some of the designer series paper, the Zoo Crew DSP, which is on sale right now for 15% off in the month of June. Um, but we have these extra accessories. So let me give some, some examples. We're going to be using this. This is a curtain for like a stage, some scallop edge, the tree, a little banner piece here, flowers, a cloud, balloons, another tree, the little vase, flowers. There's just so much you can do with this set. It is beyond cute and I'm excited to share with you these cards. Let me go ahead and go over each card just a little bit. So, and two of these cards I'd gotten from a swap, this one and this one, and we're 100% inspired by them. And the other two are Pinterest finds, things that I found on Pinterest that I just changed a little bit to make it more me and um, have directions of how you can make those as well. And that's the beauty of being inspired by others that we can inspire, they inspire us so we can inspire you. All right, the first one I'm going to show you is this really cute one. This is part of a Queen Swap, and I think it's Nancy MacArthur was the one that made this one. She did a great job creating this card, and then it has the inside that has it stamped. We have that great looking stage and our musical friends right there. This one's also from a swap, and I love this one. It has the DSP as our feature. So we have this piece of DSP on the bottom. This is also the designer series paper. When I say DSP, that's what it means, so I don't have to say it every single time. So that's a cute birthday one. This one was a Pinterest inspired one, but I changed it up just a little bit because I didn't have this, the right amount of friends. I'm excited to share with you a tip for this cute little raccoon. And then this one, oh my goodness, it has so much great texture. It's a little bit more advanced, has some odd shapes of our paper that we cut. And I went ahead and I used my stamping blends to color in our cute little llama who's knitting. But you could use the designer series paper if you wanted to instead. And I did do some heat embossing with the white powder there. All right, let's go ahead and get started on this. So I said in my intro that this kit is available to my team for just $10 as being a team perk, or it is available to my customers or my stamping friends when they order the stamp set in June. We're almost, almost done with June, which means I'm going to actually extend this kit. So if you buy the stamp set in the month of in July, you will also have a chance to get this card. I had some shipping delays, and so I didn't get a chance to share these cards as soon as I'd want it to regularly. So for this first one, we have a basic black as our bottom, and then we have this as our center here. This is a thick basic white as our inside card base. It's a fun way to have color added to our cards without having a lot of card a lot of cardstock. So this is basic white thick. This is basic black. I can make four cards using that, this template here, and two pieces. So let me say that again. One piece of paper, I can make four um, of these cards with this, or two pieces of paper I can make this basic white with. All right, let's grab our pieces. This one is super easy and a very little stamping. Let me grab this piece here. That's for our top of our curtain. And then we'll need two of our curtain pieces that I've die cut out. 
For these ones, you will have the measurements over on my blog, so don't worry about that. And then also, in your kit, I'm not allowed to stamp anything for kits, but the great thing is, is that they have these DSP that I'll send to you in the kit, so that way you all you have to do is fussy cut them out. And there's a couple different ways. You could either get this cute little banjo plane warthog and the flute plane frog, or the turtle with the drum plane beaver. Totally will be a surprise of what you get. Let's go ahead and make it a little bit different and we'll cut out these guys this time since we have our sample right there with those ones. And then you will need some ribbon because we'll use that to attach our curtains with. This one used a different one. So you could choose what kind of ribbon you want, but in the kit you'll be getting this parakeet party awesome metallic um, ribbon here. Okay. And lastly, we just need to grab the, the stamps that we want to use for the inside. So open up our basic white, grab our memento ink, and we are going to stamp a birthday greeting. You could leave it blank if you want a birthday, but we're going to go ahead and do the happy birthday to you right here in the center. Perfect. And then we're also going to grab our musical notes and do just a couple of musical notes right next to that. So it looks like we're kind of like singing the, the famous happy birthday song. Awesome. Okay, those two parts are done. We'll set that aside. Well, we'll use this because that's what we have to attach things to. <laughs> right? Right. Uh, first, let's go ahead and right here you'll see that I've already went ahead and I have went through each scallop. And I just kind of bent it and I went in a opposite way. So like one time I'd go this way, the next little scallop I'd go down. And this is just creating some texture to the top of our curtain here. Um, I have it so it's measured at five and a quarter by one and a half inches. And then we cut it, die cut this part off. And then I even trimmed it down even to a little bit more. So it's about an inch and a quarter is how wide this one is. We're going to place it where we think it's going to go, but first we need to get our cute little curtains ready too. These ones, you want to take your bone folder and just kind of curl them a little bit to create some shape. You can also kind of crinkle it like we did with the top of the curtain by using our bone folder and just folding it to create a crease. We don't want any like actual score lines, but just to make a nice crease. We'll do it to both sides. So kind of curl it right here to creating what it looks like an actual curtain. You kind of see how that works. Okay. Next, we need to grab our ribbon and it measures about 12 inches. We're going to cut that in half. We want to give us enough space to double knot this. We'll trim it with our paper snips. Grab one of our curtains here. I was gonna tie it there. I have to apologize, my hands are super cold today. It's like 64 degrees outside on this nice summer morning here in Southern California, and it's just a little bit cool in my home. Um, I don't dare to turn on the heat, that would just be silly. And so my hands are just chilly, which makes, makes it hard for me to actually use them sometimes. So I apologize if I fumble over some of these pieces there. Okay, we want to double knot it so that's actually secure. Take your ends together and snip them about half an inch. They don't have to be super long, just enough to look like it's holding something back. Do the same thing to the other side. There is a die, so if you don't have ribbon, you could just die, cut out some paper, and then glue it onto the curtain, and it makes it look like it has a string or something holding the curtain this way the stage curtain okay let me go ahead and grab those again trim off the ends there we go okay for this part we're going to have to place it where we want it to be and then we're going to add our liquid glue to the back so i want a little bit of border here i don't want it to be super um close to the edge the top curtain will though be closer to that edge there let me grab some liquid glue, do a little bit on the back of it, there we go, and place it down. I have this going down there, 
hold it since it's liquid glue it's going to need a little bit of hold you could use glue dots if you want to keep that curve a little bit more mostly we want the glue on the top and the bottom and the little dots in the inside okay line it up like so i'm going to scoot this one over just a little bit though so i have that similar border on that side next let's take our top of our curtain this guy here and we will also either use tear tape to attach it or liquid glue i'm going to use i'll use liquid glue as i say for dry time's sake but we have some we have some time on our hands so we can let it dry we're going to then go right here hover it over we're going to use the framing of the top so you want this to be able to glue down here and i'm going to put some extra weight on it just because we do want it to hold. And we're gonna set that aside while we go ahead and work on our fussy cutting. So some of the DSP has matching dies to die, cut them out and some do not. This one is a do not one. So we're just going to, let me show you. Yeah. We're going to cut around this guy. We're gonna keep his little shadow though. So it looks like he's grounded and not just floating in on the stage. We want him to have somewhere his feet can rest and go around we do want to save some of our little notes that are right by our guys here so make sure you don't just discard the surrounding pieces and what i love about this is that how it's like just one thing colored so if i wanted to i could totally color him in with my stamping blends or even my watercolor pencils and he would be super cute and custom made and it's just that banjo but I also can get away with just having one thing colored on him and that makes that part pop out just a little bit more okay cute so we'll set him aside he's ready to be attached and our cute little froggy flute player for those or is it a piccolo Tricky to see what he's doing. He looks like he's playing it the wrong direction though. That's okay, we won't blame him. So I used to play the flute in high school for just a little bit, more in junior high. And I played a handful of times since then. I am not very good at all. In fact, I don't like doing the high notes. And so that's not very good if you're a flute player because that's our strong points, right? It's the high notes but i do like to play every so often fun fact you might not have known about me okay cute little frog he is now out and ready now i just need to cut out a couple notes so let's find a cluster of three i'm going to do this cluster right here first and we're going to just kind of go close to him but not completely and making some rounded edges you might need some tweezers to hold on to this little piece as you fussy cut around, we're gonna go up a little bit and then around and come around this guy. So there's that one, and then we'll do two notes from here. We'll do this cute little eighth note. Again, just going around, and it's gonna be tiny, tiny, so try not to lose it. And this quarter note. Is this quarter? No, this is a, has two beats. What is it called when it has two beats? Man, I am horrible. Half note. You have eighth, quarter, half, and whole. So that must be a half. Okay. I think we're ready to start attaching to our stage here. Go ahead and we're gonna attach. We First, let's play with them. See where we want the placement. We can put our little flute frog here and our banjo guy here. So it looks like they're playing and looking towards each other. And that's what I would recommend. Looks like they're playing together, which means I'm gonna pop this guy up on dimensionals, but I'm gonna leave this guy flat. So, oh, sorry, I said the opposite way, huh? Liquid glue on the back of this guy. Our banjo playing friend. And we'll slide him into our stage here press down let's grab my dimensionals so I take it off the sheet 
We'll put one on the top and one on the bottom. Remove our backing. And flip them over. Have them coming about the same ground as this guy because we want to give him some head space so we can add those playing notes. For this one, we want dimensionals, but you could either use the minis or cut some of these in half. Just take your paper snips along the edge of your dimensional sheet, peel it off, and stick it on. So this one, and we want to have it kind of a, a tilted, so it looks like it's being played very playfully. These two smaller ones, I'm going to just glue on. I feel like those ones would be just too tiny for me to try to grab and stick, but you could use a glue dot, so if you still want it to have a little bit of pop to it, that would help as well. Let's see, that's gotten too close to our friend. And this will work. Okay, not too bad. Looking pretty good. Flip this over. Hopefully it's dry and we didn't mess it up. And then put on some Stamping Seal Plus onto this guy. You wanna use some strong adhesive because it's gonna be stuck to our basic black. You wanna make sure that it's not coming off. Get, place it so it's borders on all four sides. Make sure you hover first before you press and stick. That's looking pretty good. And there we go. The super cute flute frog and banjo playing animal friend here makes this great looking curtain card. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. Let me go ahead and set it aside. We'll go on to our next one. I'm going to save our most detailed one for the very end. Let's go ahead and do our pumpkin pie card base. So it's going to be that one and we'll grab the sample out. There we go. This cute one. Set that to the side so you can see. And we'll grab the pieces that we need for this one. Let's make sure. There we go. I have two containers over here, so I'm losing where everything is. I apologize for that. This should be the one. Okay. So here we go. Inside, when you get a kit, I put all the things that you need for it in the inside of it. So you just unfold it, kind of keep it safe that way. This one has our DSP, this has our pool party, our basic white circle, some of our embellishments, the glossy dots, and of course our cute little fox on the scooter. Grab your bone folder so we can get that nice and crisp. There we go. And let's go do our stamping real quick while we have this out. We only have one thing to stamp this time, using our memento ink. Grab that, grab that same happy birthday we just used, ink it up really nice. Look to make sure it looks good and stamp in the center of that circle there. Perfect. Okay, grab our piece of DSP, flip it over, grab your liquid glue, which sometimes this opposite side of the DSP is so hard to use because it has the cutest images on the other side. So we have like the sloth there, a little hedgehog doing some artwork and a I want to say he's a ram or a goat but we're gonna go ahead and place this down make sure you look at your scallops if you want them to look more like M's or like U's be mindful which way you do it and then I'm not gonna go all the way to the bottom I'm gonna go about a quarter of an inch three-fourths of an inch up from the bottom okay oh we do have one more thing we need to stamp here in just a second too we'll get to that justice wait actually we need to do that now let me grab it forgot to grab my pool party ink so I apologize for that pool party ink and we need our cute little confetti this is super fun it's a great way to make some background we're going to just take this and stamp along our pool party strip right here I could turn it so it has like different angles to it too just stamp along there okay now we can put that away almost forgot that step Grab your liquid glue and flip it over. Keep your liquid glue in the center because this one is very small and it's gonna squish. And we're gonna go about finger space, maybe finger and a half from that DSP edge. Then look like it's a step going up. Okay, and I did squish still some out. So I'll take my finger and we'll just clean it up a little bit. 
Okay, grab our Stylish Shapes die cut fox. You can see he has some cute stitching on him. Flip him over, grab your ribbon. This is a pool party ribbon that's about 10 inches. We're gonna fold it in half and we're going to attach it to the back here. And there's lots of different ways you can attach this ribbon. I like to use dimensional sometimes to help me with the attachment here. Or you can use the tear tape and tape it down that way. Um, sometimes I'll even will use the adhesive first. So we'll grab like the stamp and seal, do a little strip of adhesive so that it's in place so that I have some wiggle room. Mostly want to make sure our top has some loop hanging out the top and that our bottom has some ends. Flip it over, make sure it looks good before we add our dimensionals. That's looking pretty good. So I have a piece of hair that's just getting stuck to that paper. I think I got, nope. <laughs> there we go. Hopefully. Okay, add our dimensionals. And what we're going to do is help secure that ribbon by putting dimensionals on half of it. So I'll just go a couple spots here. And then make sure we have enough coverage on the outer sides as well. Do one more here. Move the backing. Flip it over, and you can see I kind of placed my ribbon going a different direction than that one. Totally okay. We'll make it work. We'll just have to do some trimming here in a minute. We're going to have it go over the DSP part and our um, piece of pull party. Place that down. Now we have our ends here so we can do a true trim. At an angle, so you want to go so it's not coming off the card. Right, we want to make sure it can fit in our envelope. There we go. I'm going to fix this guy just a little bit by holding them. And I like to cut ribbon at an angle versus straight across. It creates more of like a banner edge there. Okay. Then for our cute little happy birthday, we're only going to put a dimensional on one side of the back. So look at it. Like this side's going to be on here, so there doesn't need to be dimensional on the right side. So flip it over where your finger is, hold it there. You could use a little bit of glue dot or some liquid glue right here if you wanted to as well, so that way it secures itself to that piece of DSP. But I'm not too worried. Lastly, we just need to do some embellishing with these cute glossy dots that are in that pool party color. So we can get them. There we go. So here's our glossy dots. In your kit, you'll get them just still attached to that um, window sheet looking piece. We're gonna do our large one down here on the DSP. Then with a the small one to follow at an angle going up, like so. And then one more over by our happy birthday there. So cute. Just love that fox. I love how he looks like I colored him, but I totally didn't. If you're not loving the fox, you can change this layout with any other of the animals. Doing that same method of die cutting it out in the circle shape kind of gives it a spotlight on our friend. And then you can have it the card base matching whatever the color of our little friend is. All right, that's card number two. Let's go on to our next one, which is one of my favorites, but requires a lot of fussy cutting, but don't worry. Other than that, it's really, really easy. This one, we're using the Lemon Line Twist card base. Let me grab that out from our kit. And the new Pebble Path in color. Okay. So we have two different ones here. So let me kind of show you. Well, creatures. The card sample I saw had this cute little elephant friend which he is really cute. Sorry, I can't pick him up though. There we go. Here's this elephant. He was part of the original design, but my DSP didn't have a lot of him in his full size. And so I didn't want to have him there unless I knew I could share him. So I can't remember. I have one kit I've sent out already and if hers has the elephant or not. So we will make it with the elephant. Should we? Yeah, we'll make it with the elephant. So that way, will give us a better idea. All right, we don't need the card base right now, but we do need this basic white. 
and we need our pebbled path ink this color here and be something great to celebrate and then it says you so grab that and we're going to go ahead and ink that up and put that in the top right corner right about there this will help us know where we need to place our friends here in just a minute okay so our cute little raccoon he'll come already die cut out because he has a matching die with him because he matches with a stamped image right here you see how the stamp matches our dsp so he's already ready to go but then we have our koala bear who's juggling we need to cut this one out and this time i am taking away the ground so we're going as close as we can around our little pieces here and we are going to save those cupcakes that he's juggling so don't throw those away those will be part of our our card as well as part of our embellishment in fact i love it when we can create our own embellishments with either dsp or a punch and their paper embellishments versus like a rhinestone um which i still love rhinestones but i love it when we can make our own okay going around For fussy cutting, you want to keep your scissors the same direction and move the paper, not the scissors. You'll do a little bit of moving, but you'll see my tip and my scissors are usually pointing the same direction. Okay, there's one friend. Here's our cupcakes. We'll set those aside. Let's grab our dog friend. Again, we'll get cut away his, his ground. We're going to keep him pretty close to the bottom of ours so it doesn't look like he's floating. It's important not to give the illusion that our friends can fly. We want to make it as realistic as possible, right? No, we just, it's more appealing to the eye when things are grounded versus like a floating flower or something that you're like, that doesn't, that doesn't work. So same with our cute little dog here. We know dogs don't fly. Almost got it. Just keep on going around. We do want to be careful because he does have a fun little party toy in his mouth that he's blowing. So we'll cut around that. Again, I'm using the inside of my scissors, not the tip. And my tip is staying the same direction. Turning my paper as I go. Okay. And our last one is our elephant friend. This is a great project to do when you are sitting down, either watching your favorite show. You can cut out all of that DSP. I should grab some of the outs to show you guys how amazing this paper is. So on one side of the paper, it's a lot of them are these different little animals. We have campfire animals, we have these party animals, we have dancing animals, all kinds of fun animals. And then on the other side, it's just a black and white um, look to it. So this one you see has like stars on the back of this one, a little bit more neutral, so it can go with almost everything. So let's say you're not a huge animal fan, but you're loving those black and whites, you could totally get it for that. But let's be honest, who doesn't love these cute, cute animals? Okay, we got our elephant now, he's ready. So we want to start with our raccoon. He is our party guy. And in the sample we had, I had the this guy on the far side and then every one going, going small to large. This one, they're all very similar sizes. So I had him in right here with our little um, armadillo with his present looking like he's going towards him. So this raccoon is going to be our focal point. To make him pop up even more, we're going to double stack our dimensionals. You heard me right. I'm going to put one dimensional down and the other one. We're going to remove the backing and then I'm going to grab another dimensional and I'm going to stack it directly on top of that one I just placed down. This is going to make him pop up just a little bit more than his friends. So you know that it's his party we're celebrating. I'm going to have him on this complete edge over here though. Right there. And then we're going to add our elephant friend. He's going to be on the far other side. 
we will have a little bit of wiggle room with our spacing here because our paper isn't as wide as our card base. We're going to put him so he can go off just a little bit with him there. And then we'll add our final two. Put some dimensionals on the backs of these guys. Usually to have a spot to support their head and something more towards their stomach or middle. Okay. We're going to have him right next to our party friend. So he's totally blowing that right in his face. And then our cute koala bear is going to be right here next to this guy. And it's okay to overlap our elephant friend just a little bit right there. Next, what we're going to do is grab our cupcakes. Take those, and we're going to fussy cut out at least three of them. We've, these guys have open hands, so we're going to put one in each of their hands. You can pick out the colors you want. And then we're going to keep one also for our embellishment by our words. We'll do that one first. This one's really tiny, so you might need to use your tweezers or hold the paper with your hand. It does not have to be perfect. Okay. I'm going to glue him on so it gives him some dry time. I like to put the glue on the paper instead of on the cupcake, though. So it's easier to move and pick around. Okay, add an angle there. Cute. Next two cupcakes. Let's see. I lost all my pieces. There we go. This is a green cupcake. It has a green paper on it. And like white frosting. So around. Don't lose it. I am going to place it face up so I don't lose that one. And then we also have, I'm going, I have the other one, but we're going to keep it all three different cupcakes. So we'll have a pink one, a green one, and our cherry on top one. Take this one, kind of trim it around. Sorry, focus. Sometimes if I get too close, it's hard to focus in, so I apologize for that if it got too blurry. Okay. Now we should be good. We're gonna flip it over, make sure I know where they are, and I'm gonna grab some glue dots. Here's my glue dots. I'm gonna take this and flip it over and put it on there just like a sticker. See how it's attaching to my glue dot there? Okay, I'm gonna remove it from my roll so it's easier to handle and pick which cupcake goes to which one. I had the pink one going to my koala bear last time, so we'll give it to him again. Put that in his hand and press down, so now what happens, not only is it attached to his hand, but to the paper behind him as well. Since that glue dot's a little bit bigger, let's go ahead and show you and get closer. So you see how it's attaching to its hand and the paper behind it, and I love that these are in dimensional, so you can see the shadows behind there. Can you see how our raccoon is a little bit higher than the rest? See how he's popping up more? Because it's his party. All right, I should have done this before and attach it to my mat, so I apologize. Let's go ahead and do that now. We'll grab our stamp and seal plus, do it a little bit in each corner. And it's, I said do it before because it's just hard to attach the adhesive when it's bumpy. There we go. Now we'll grab our pebbled path mat, line this up. And then press down. Awesome. Then we get to use some liquid glue on the back of this guy and grab our card base. Put that over. Let me grab my bone folder. Because you can see how this is going to open up too easily. I like my bone folder to get my crease. So that way it lays a little bit more flat. Look at that difference. Look how nice that is. So much easier to work on. And it also will ship a lot nicer too in your envelope. Oh my goodness, so cute. I'm loving these colors. This is a great kid card and even like a little boy because we chose some colors that are a little bit more flexible. So, so cute. And look at that raccoon. He is, he is the party person with our balloons there. Okay, last one. This one has the most details on it, but it's not too hard. This has some advanced techniques that we use. Let me grab the pieces out. 
All right. So I'm using a Coastal Cabana card base. That one has a little crease on it, so I'm going to switch it out for this one. And I've just cut it a little differently. You'll see that it's the four and a quarter by 11 scored at the um, five and a half. Then we'll have a large piece of basic white, the flirty flamingo, and then in your kit you'll have an embossed piece of basic white that has um, the stripes on here. Let me grab that folder. So this is the stripes and splatters 3D embossing folder. I just put this in my stamp and cut emboss machine, but you'll notice I have a score line here. So I did score it first to give me a point of where I wanted to have this place. I wanted some of that blank space. This is trying to make it look like we have a wall versus the whole thing. Because we have our cute little llama is going to be sitting here on our basic white. And we want there to be a difference from the floor to the wall behind her. So cute. I did go ahead and did a step by myself beforehand. And that was emboss, heat emboss with something great to celebrate you on that piece of Coastal Cabana. You'll just get that piece there and you can either stamp it if you don't have the heat emboss or you can um, heat emboss if you do have those materials. We are using those glossy dots again and we have some really small die cut pieces. So we have a stool and the vase and these tiny little flowers. They look like tulips to me. I get one in my hand so I can show you. I'm trying not to lose it. So they, I die cut them out with white, but I went ahead and I used my stamping blends and I colored it in. That's how we got the two-tone look. And I did one already so you can see, but we'll do the other one together. All right. If you don't have the stamp set and you um, have a DSP, you can still use the llama because it's the same. Let me grab it so you can see. All right, look at this llama here. There she is. That's the same llama as this llama. So I was able to die cut that one out if we wanted to or fussy cut it out if you don't have the dies and then not have to worry about coloring in. But we wanted to custom make this one. So we're gonna color her in today. Since I use Memento ink, I didn't use my blends. If I used my stays on, I could have used my watercolor pencils. So just be mindful which method you want to use to color in and you'll know what inks to use. All right, first, let's go ahead and outline her. I'm gonna use the smaller side of my smoky slate and just go on the outline. And let me grab this card in view so you know what we're working on, right? We'll move our card base aside and this is what she's gonna look like. Or hopefully she looks like by the time we're done. We're gonna go ahead and go on the inside of her ears, not, well, the outside, I guess. And then the trim around her head just follow those curved lines there. I'm not going to do a lot of coloring in, but outlining. This saves time and it gives the look that it has extra dimension to it versus just a solid on color. If you wanted to color totally and you, you, you can, I'm going to kind of color her hooves in with that same color. So that's how you can see the separation between the two of her arms and her hooves there. And I'll continue going along her fluffy side right there, and along her side here, and go back down to her hooves. Okay, I think that's all for her. Then, well, for that color, I'm going to grab my petal pink stamping blend. This is the dark one, but if the light one will work just fine. We're going to go and color the inside of her ears now which is on the outside of the llama, but it's the inside of her ears. So kind of confusing. We're gonna take this and just do a little circle on her cheek. Start little, you can always make it grow, but it's hard to, you, there's a color lifter, but it's, it's better just to start small. And that's all for that color. Let's grab our pool party. We're gonna put some blue eyeshadow on our knitting llama here. And then we're gonna go over her yarn and these little squiggle lines, which looks like written lines, but those are just the, her stitching. There we go. And we need to make sure we color in her little yarn ball as well. Okay. Next, we're going to color in her chair. 
So I'm going to use the dark flirty flamingo on the bottom of the chair. And it is a little bit, uh, as long as you use a tip, I think you'll be fine. Because there's some smaller spots here. So I'm going to use the very tip of mine to color that one in. And then go around the outside and go around the images. I don't want to have that color. So that way I know I'm staying within it. And then I'll come back and color the inside. You want to make sure that you color it all at the same time because when it's wet is when it blends the best. At least for this first coat. If I wanted to add some more shading to it, I would let it dry for a little bit and come back to it. Next, let's go ahead and grab the light flirty flamingo. Again, using more of the brush side. I'm going to color it completely in this bottom part of her chair. It's kind of small just to do the outline, so we're going to color it the whole thing in. There we go. Then the top of the chair, though, I am going to color just the outside, just to line it. If you wanted to, you can go ahead and color in a little bit more on each corner. For the most part, leave some white space there. All right, that should be all for the coloring. If you want to make your little vase darker, you could grab your stamping blend and go ahead and color this part in as well. Then go ahead and grab your little tiny flower and color her in with that light flirty flamingo. Grab your parakeet party or your green of choice. Hold, cover that top part of the flower so we're not coloring that and just color that stem. Make sure you have some paper underneath you to help catch that color because you will color off the lines. And that should be it as far as the prep goes for this. And now we just need to assemble. So let's grab our card base back in with our bone folder and get it nice and creased. For this one, I like to attach these two pieces together first. And I want them to be um, not perfect. <laughs> On a slant is what I call it. So here's what perfect looks like. And I want it to be off on a slant just a little bit. So I'm going to use some liquid glue. I usually don't use liquid glue on the basic white, but we're going to do it because we have so much texture in that bossing part there. And we're going to hold it and go off on that slant just a little bit. Okay. Then we'll grab our bigger piece of basic white and we'll attach that to it. In fact, what I want to do is attach this to my card base first. And that'll help us see the bigger picture. Okay. So we want this one to be tilted as well, but going kind of the opposite way. So that's going to have uneven sides. With some people, that will drive them crazy. So hopefully you're okay with it. I, I like things when they're crooked because it makes it look like I meant it that way, which I am. I am meaning it to be not straight. And it gives a little less pressure on making it perfect, right? All right. Well, that looks pretty good. Flip over our llama and flip over our greeting. And we're going to put some dimensionals on the back of these. She's pretty tall, so we, she might need three dimensionals. And let's get three on the back of this one too. Remove the backings and attach our cute llama here. So we want her to have her feet kind of on that basic white, like so. And then we'll grab our greeting. For this one, I had her meet just at that score line and I was like, ah, it looks okay, but it, I think it looks better with this way. Then attach our greeting so it's going over onto our card base a little bit that meets right about there looking good these little pieces are going to be tricky so here's what i did with our little vase here let me grab it and there we go a glue dot open that up and attach a glue dot to the back of this one so it is let me focus it is so small it's like playing with paper dolls with these little pieces here. We're going to peel it off the back 
and then I can attach my little cute flowers here. I'm gonna grab my take a pick tool though because this is gonna be tricky. And I'm gonna make sure that my color is facing outward and I'm going to stick my little flower. Give yourself enough stem though. It's gonna stick to me, that's okay. It's a dry stick, so it's not going to um, cause any transfer of the glue. So now I have it right there on my finger. Not too bad. I didn't get that. But there we go. That's a little bit better. All right, let's keep it on my finger so I don't lose it. Now, this is a tiny bit of glue, so use just dots for our stool here. This is our pebbled path stool. And I'm going to go in the top and the bottom. I'm not even worrying about that middle pieces there. And we're going to set that right above, so right next to our cute llama. There should be still enough stick on the, our vase that we could just attach our vase with our flowers right there on our stool. Cute, cute, cute. And lastly, we just need to embellish. So we have our glossy dots again and that pool party, which pool party, I'm using a Coastal Cabana as my card base, but they're so similar that they're kind of like best friends and they can get along just fine. We're going to put the medium sized one close to our head, then at an angle come down with the smaller one. And then our large one, we're gonna come over here next to our stool. And there we go. Oh my goodness, make it closer so you can see how adorable. And I just love this color combo. And that texture, this texture you can't see very well on the images. And so it's great to see it here on this video here where it has so much texture to create that, that fun wall look. Let me go ahead and grab all these cards back in. I would love to hear to see which one's your favorite. If you are loving all of our little friends, if you love this fast, fast fox wishing happy birthday, or if you are a lover of our stage friends who are musical and are sending their happy birthday wishes in the inside of this card. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube so you can see all of my future videos and be part of my Stamping Friends family. Have a great, great day and happy stamping, everyone. Goodbye.